Right. So we take you now to Duffy's Tavern with our guest tonight, Jean Sablon, and starring Archie himself, Ed Gardner. <laughs> Duffy's Tavern is brought to you by Ipana Toothpaste and Touche, the beforehand lotion. Ipana for the smile of beauty, Touche for softer, lovelier hands. Ipana. Touche. So for the smile of beauty, use Ipana twice a day. And to keep your hands looking lovely, just be sure that you use Touche. No phone call from Duffy. <laughs> That's funny. What time is it, Eddie? Uh, three weeks before Christmas. <laughs> I've got dirty Duffy. Yeah, that's why he ain't called. You know, you got a present from him last year, didn't you? Yeah. A gift certificate to Joe's push cart. <laughs> well, now, have you selected your present for Mr. Duffy yet? Well, uh, to tell you the truth, Eddie, I've been giving it a lot of thought. Mm. What are you giving him? Nothing. <laughs> After all, it's the thought that counts. <laughs> well, Mr. Archie, about your present to me. Yeah. Don't give it a thought. <laughs> uh, what you gonna buy your girlfriend, Peaches Latour? Peaches Latour? Oh, oh the striptease. Uh, I gave her the air, Eddie. When? When them new styles came in, she started wearing her dresses longer. How much longer? About 30 seconds. <laughs> and on her, it don't look good. <clears throat> well, I ain't seen her since I met the uh, Rene, you know, my uh, present swain. Oh, the, the little French filly. Yeah, yeah. Uh, how, how's that romance progressing? Well, it's progressing a little faster than you are. Uh, uh, I can't be too sure, Eddie. I don't seem to get no way. You know, she's got a phobia. John Sablon Records. Every time I go to hold her hand, she reaches for the phonograph. And I have to listen to that crummy French singing. <laughs> Mums le cordon. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Oh, I'm telling you, it's murder. John Sablon? Yeah, French guy. Sort of a Bobby Breen with a beret. <laughs> now, uh, one of them intimate singers. He intimates a lot of things in French that he could never get away with in English. <laughs> this Rennie falls for him. Yeah, well, how'd she happen to meet him? She didn't, Eddie. That's the drought of it. She's uh, just in love with his records. Every time I see her, I have to listen to them Sablon records until the wax is coming out of my ears. Oh, well, why don't you try scratching up the record? I did. It only made him sound better. <laughs> Day and night, she's listening to the guy. You know that uh, little Victor dog that they got on phonographs? Uh-huh. On her machine, it's turned into a French poodle. <laughs> I'm telling you, it's weird. Hello, boys. Oh, hello, Miss Duffy. Look, you're a woman. Let me put it this way. <laughs> Could you fall in love with just a voice? Your voice? Yeah. No. Yeah. I lost it. <laughs> you know... You know, it's a funny thing about voices, Archie. They're very deceiving. Voices are deceiving? What do you mean? Well, like last night. I'm walking down to Cohen's candy store, and I happen to pass Lefty's pool room. Lefty's pool room? That ain't on the way to Cohen's candy store. You go your way, and I'll go mine. <laughs> well, anyway, suddenly, out of the darkness, I hear this soft, romantic, appealing voice. What did the guy say? Hiya, toots. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> well, the minute I heard him, I was just one big goose pimple. Yeah, uh-huh. what did you do? Well, you know I'm not the kind of a girl that lets men pick me up. So I turned around and threw my handkerchief at him. <laughs> and then? He picked it up, blew his nose, and ran away. <laughs> I guess I showed him. (laughs) So, like I say, voices are very deceiving. That's what I've been telling Rennie. Imagine a dame falling in love with a guy just because she heard his voice on on phonograph records. Whose records? John Sablon. The dame is silly. Ridiculous. Of course. Because I'm in love with him. (laughs) At two, Miss Duffy? Hmm. I could wear out my needles just listening to him. (laughs) Have you ever heard him sing Manzel? Three hundred and umpity ump times. (laughs) Me too. I've heard it so many times I could sing it backwards. Now, don't exaggerate. Who's exaggerating? Manzel Cafe Small A. Oh, no, Miss Duffy. You dames is nuts. Look, did you ever get a good look at some of them crooners? Take that Sinatra, you know. You put an olive on one end of him, and you think he's in hors d'oeuvre. <laughs> and that sloppy Crosby and that Jolson, that old man down on his last knee. <laughs> and this Sablon is probably even worse. If Rennie ever got a gander at... Hey, wait a minute. That's the cure. Give me that phone. Hello? Hotel Pierre? Uh, look, honey, uh, I would like to be connected with uh, Jean Sablon's room. You're speaking from there. (laughs) So many calls, you had to move the switchboard up, huh? Well, uh, tell them it's Western Union calling. Mm -hmm. Hello, Senor Sablon? Uh... Western Union, uh, I have a message. It says, uh, go immediately to Duffy's Tavern to attend a meeting of the United Nations. <laughs> You're too busy, huh? Uh, it says further that there are strained relations between the United States and France. You can't be bothered. Uh, it says still further that one of them strained relations is a lady. You'll be right over, huh? <laughs> Archie, Archie, John Sablon is coming down here? Yeah. In his flesh? <laughs> now, wait a minute. Decompose yourself, Miss Duffy. Archie, Archie, do you think I got time to go to the beauty parlor before he gets here? Well, do they do spot welding? <laughs> Don't be insulting. Call me at the beauty parlor as soon as he arrives. Okay. Now, Eddie, give me that phone. What are you going to do? I got an idea that will turn that sablon into a Frenchman's creep. (laughs) Hello, Rene. This is Dreamboat. (laughs) Look, honey, uh uh-huh. No, Archie. (laughs) Look, honey, how would you like to meet sablon in person? Rene, stop panting and answer my question. Well, sure, I got it all fixed up. He'll be here any minute, and as soon as he does, I'll call you. Okay, Rennie. <laughs> uh, What's the idea? The idea? Well, you know what them cronies all look like, Eddie. I'm going to let the guy dig his grave with his own face. <laughs> oh, all right. Oh, hello, Finnegan. Where you been? Oh, down to the corner. Uh, what you been doing? Oh, whistling the dogs. <laughs> Naturally, but, uh, why? To get a date for me dog. <laughs> can't your dog get his own dates? Ah, oh, you know dogs can't whittle. <laughs> Never thought about it in that light. Uh, uh, well, did you have any luck? Nah. Dogs are pretty hard to pick up these days. But three dames gave me the eye. <laughs> yeah, huh? Uh... Good-looking dames? Nah. Dogs. 
Well, what are you doing hanging around street corners? I thought you was going to do your Christmas shopping today. Do uh, I did, Art. Yeah, huh? what'd you get? Well, I got two hats for me brother. <laughs> two hats? Yeah. That's my brother Oswald. Oh. Uh... <laughs> Uh, how, uh, how are they, by the way? Oswald? Yeah. Oh, they're fine. <laughs> uh, by the way, Finnegan, you know that Oswald sounds like he's got two heads. <laughs> Finnegan, what would you like for Christmas? Oh, I don't know. Just something simple. Some handkerchiefs, socks, ties, a windmill. <laughs> Look, Finnegan, has Santa Claus ever seen you? Uh, why, I... Well, don't let him. He might quit believing in people. <laughs> you know, you hear about many different toothpastes these days, but of all these, only one toothpaste is recommended by more dentists than any other. It's Ipana toothpaste. Ipana is recommended by dentists two to one over any other toothpaste. Not only that, Ipana is used by more dentists for their own personal use than any other toothpaste or powder, according to a recent nationwide survey. Now, there must be a reason for this overwhelming preference by dentists for Ipana toothpaste. Try Ipana yourself. See how it can help your own teeth to a brightness, your smile to a loveliness you never thought possible. For Ipana not only cleans your teeth, but when followed by gentle gum massage, promotes the health of your gums. And firm, healthy gums are most important to the brightness of your teeth. So do as so many dentists recommend. Use Ipana toothpaste for your smile of beauty. I can't wait for that runner to get here. As soon as she meets this sublime and sees how ugly he is, I'm a live duck. <laughs> well, I hope it works. It better. Uh, if it don't, I'm dead. Good evening. I ain't the only one. <laughs> uh, just a second. Who are you? I'm Jean Sablon. Who are you? The late, Mr. Archie. <laughs> You mean to tell me that you're Jean Sablon? You're even better looking than Hildegard. <laughs> How come you ain't fat or skinny or something? And, and where's your toupee and, and, and your buck teeth? Uh, sorry, I, I haven't got any. Oh, huh? And you got the nerve to call yourself a crooner? <laughs> Frankly, I'm a little disappointed in you. You might at least have been hideous. <laughs> This kind of cocks me idea into a hat. <laughs> well, thanks for dropping in, John. <laughs> so long, old pal. <laughs> but Archie, this is not very polite. Yeah, I guess we should be polite. Eddie, talk to the guy, will you? <laughs> uh, t- tell me, Mr. Sublime, what do you think of the tavern? The tavern? Well, I, I think it is... Uh... uh I... I always the word. You, you know, my English is so... Uh, so... Lousy? That's the word. <laughs> I guess this is what the French call their garlic wit. <laughs> Sneaks up on you. Uh, hey, Art. Who's the handsome guy? Stop rubbing it in, will you? This is Monsieur Sablon of Paris. Oh, I am Monsieur Finnegan of Tide Avenue. And this is what is known as going from the sublime to the ridiculous. <laughs> I'm delighted to know you, Monsieur Finnegan. Oh, she talks funny. <laughs> well, it's an accent. The guy's got an umlaut in his mouth. Oh, I think, uh, how can you understand him? You ain't supposed to understand him. He's a romantic singer. Now, beat it, will you? I got business. Look, John, uh, I'd like to have a man-to-man talk with you. Suppose you had a dame, and every time you tried to hold her hand, she played a phonograph record. Tell me, what would you do? On? 
Or off the record. <laughs> off the record. Well, I tell her how beautiful she looks. Then I'd hold her close. Then I whisper sweet nothings to her. Look, I can get the same results with a fast beer. <laughs> You got nothing different? Well, next uh, I would sing to her some little love song like this. Oh, please, John, don't bother, don't bother, huh? No, uh, it's not bother. Oh, oh, dear. <laughs> On the rue Again, de la I have paix, to listen to this stuff. There was once a cabaret and maybe... As the night went along, there was suddenly a song and maybe All the world seems to say that they love the cabaret and Mimi. But I knew that when she'd see me, Mimi sang for me alone Only for me and no other Her lips were singing Such a sweet refrain Though now she sings to another in my heart, the song will remain. Près de la rue de la paix, il y a un cabaret, and Mimi. Now I'm sitting sad and dreamy. Just for Mimi and her song. Ennui, ennui. <clears throat> Look, uh, Jean. This dame I was talking to you about, uh... Dame? This croquette. <laughs> oh, what about her? Well, you know how silly some dames are. This one is nuts about you. If I get her on the phone, would you please insult her and discourage her? Well, why not? Okay, it's a deal. Hello, Rennie. Uh, John Sablon is here, and he'd, uh, like to talk to you. Okay, John, here. Hello. Insulter. Insulter. Certainly. Hello. Honey. Listen. What's the idea of double-crossing my friend Archie? What? Archie? She's French. Yeah. Oh, and what a beautiful voice. Oh, well, she's a beautiful dame. Beautiful, huh? Yeah. Hello, Renée. Qu'est-ce que je veux dire? Hello, boy. Vous avez une bien jolie voix, la, la voix d'un ange. Ah, that's murder. Oh, oh, ma petite. Ma petite? Look, John, you don't have to overdo the insult. Now go ahead. Bon, mais na naturellement. Oh, mais bien sûr, je serais heureux de vous rencontrer. Alors? Alors, je vous attends ici, chez Duffy. Uh, Jean, uh, what is this? <laughs> Jean, attend ici, ici, chez, chez Duffy. A big insult, Archie. It's a big insult, huh? <laughs> yes, I say, she's a bigger pig than Duffy. Bigger pig than Duffy. Well, that ought to do it. <laughs> alors, alors, Rodney, hein? Eh? À bientôt. Au revoir. Well, Archie, we're all fixed up. Good. Thanks a million, Jean. Uh, Miss Archie. Uh, yeah, Eddie. A word. <laughs> oh, uh, excuse me, Jean. Uh, what is it, Eddie? Uh, that phone call that Mr. Sablon just made in French. Yeah? Wasn't kosher. 
<laughs> what do you mean, wasn't kosher? He called her a ma petite, didn't he? <laughs> yeah, but look here in this French dictionary. Ma petite, a term of endearment. A term of endearment? That lend lease Lanny Ross. <laughs> Eddie, quick. What's the translation of Je Tende Icy Duffy? Let's see. Wait a minute. Oh, yeah. Je Tende Icy Shay. That means I will meet you at. Now, if you can figure out what Duffy means, you've got the answer. <laughs> Dirty double crosser. That son of ox Charles Boy. <laughs> Savant, come here. Look, you low French heel. <laughs> What's the idea of underground in me? Well, sorry, I, I don't understand. What's the idea of making passes at my dame? I'm French. <laughs> That's a flimsy excuse. <laughs> Who do you think you're dealing with? Who? I'll tell you who you're dealing with. Drop dead. That's who you're dealing with. Archie, you cannot talk like that to a Frenchman. I demand satisfaction. Okay, I'll give you satisfaction. Do you choose pistol or sword? I choose... What's this guy talking about? <laughs> Pistols or sword? You don't mean you want a duel? Yes, it's the only way I can avenge my honor. Yeah, yeah. But, uh, but, but you know, du dueling is illegal. It's, it's barbaric. <laughs> Furthermore, a guy could be killed that way. <laughs> Archie, you promised to give me satisfaction. Well, I'm satisfied right now. <laughs> Look, uh, can't we just forget the whole thing, ma petite? <laughs> Archie, you are a coward. A coward? At the moment, yes. But just give me a couple of minutes to figure my way out of this, and we'll see how much of a coward I am. <laughs> I guess there isn't a woman listening who isn't interested in trying something different when it comes to making herself lovelier. What a question, Mr. Stewart. Of course we're interested. Well, this concerns lovelier hands. It's a new and really different idea in hand lotions. It's Truché, the beforehand lotion. Oh? Truché, the beforehand lotion. There's never been anything like it. For besides using Truché as you use other hand lotions, you can also use it beforehand. Before what? Before you do dishes or light laundry. Before you put your hands in that hot, soapy water. And what's the point of that? Because Truché guards hands when they need protection. Truché even guards hands when they're in hot, soapy water. And that's where most of the damage is done. Oh, of course it is. Why, hot, soapy dish water plays havoc with my hands, particularly in winter. Then try Truché for its wonderful protection. You'll love to use Truché, too. It's creamy and fragrant. A perfect hand lotion that will fill every lotion need. So why not begin today to use Truché? T-R-U-S-H-A-Y. Oh, this is terrible. A duel yet. Eddie, Eddie, I'm too young to die. Is that all that's bothering you? <laughs> well, well, what really burns me up, though, is that... Just last week, I paid a doctor ten bucks for a complete physical checkup. <laughs> uh, Eddie, how are we going to get out of this? We? Oui. Eddie, please, stop talking French at a time like this. <laughs> Got enough trouble. Well, Archie, I'm ready. How do you wish to die? How about old age? <laughs> no, please, no jokes. It is your life or mine. Have a choice? <laughs> okay, I'll take yours. <laughs> After all, it's only a girl. Which do you prefer, pistol or sword? Which do you prefer? I will use a sword. Okay, I'll use a pistol. <laughs> uh -huh. Now, we must both use the same weapon. Oh, we do, huh? Well, uh... How good are you with a pistol? Well, you mean the British Webley Automatic or the Smith & Wesson 45 caliber on the 38 frame? Mm -hmm. 
How are you with a sword? <laughs> well, do you mean apes, rapiers, foes, or sabers? Hmm. Eddie, what am I going to do with this guy? Try spelling bee. <laughs> Come to think of it, you, you, you couldn't beat him at that, neither. Wait a minute, Savon. I, I, I just remembered that the duel is off. Why? Uh, we ain't got no pistols. What about swords? Uh, we ain't got them, neither. Gosh, what about them two swords hanging on the wall in the back room? <laughs> and again... The back room? I'll get them. Oh, this is terrible. Wait a minute. Eddie. Hey, I got an idea. We're fighting this duel over a beautiful dame, ain't we? Yeah. Would a Frenchman fight over an ugly dame? No. Give me that phone. <laughs> Hello? Beauty parlor? Uh, Miss Duffy, please. <laughs> Retread. <laughs> Hello? Hello, Miss Duffy? You gotta get over here right away. Yeah, he's here. Okay. Well, here are the swords. Oh, oh, yeah, 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 the swords. Uh, Which one do you want? I'll take both of them. <laughs> look, look, Sablon, I, I was just thinking, uh, uh, we can't fight this duel. Uh, Why not? Well, to fight a duel, you, you, you're supposed to have a second, ain't you? Yes. Well, I ain't got one. Uh, don't worry, Arch, I'll be your second. <laughs> oh, that Finnegan. Uh, look, let's get started. Uh, one, two, three. On guard. 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 All right, quit stalling, will you? Well, I guess this is it. On guard. We fight for the honor of his Ronnie. Archie, put down that sword. Europa, she finally got here. Uh, just a second. Who is this? Archie, stop playing soldier and introduce me. Okay. <laughs> John, off guard. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Sablon, uh, this is uh, La Belle Duffy. Rene Duffy. Archie, you mean over this where I've been fighting? <laughs> yep, take a good look at her. What have you got to say for yourself? My honor has been avenged. <laughs> good night. Hello? Oh, hello, Ronnie. Uh, no, he just left. Huh? Well, he's handsome and attractive and charming and everything, but uh, confidentially, I think the guy is a bit of a coward. <laughs> If the man sitting next to you right now happens to be your husband, and if said husband is a very grouchy one because he's suffering from a cold, play it smart, little lady. Help the old sour puss get quick relief from his cold misery with Minute Rub, a modern chest rub. Rub Minute Rub on his throat, chest, and back. In a minute, Minute Rub soothing menthol vapors begin to clear that stuffed-up feeling in the nose and throat. In a minute, Minute Rub helps bring a feeling of warmth and relief to those tight, sore, aching muscles brought on by your cold. So get a tube of Minute Rub and get quick relief from annoying cold misery the modern way. The greaseless, stainless Minute Rub way. It's time now to leave Duffy's Tavern for this evening, but let's meet here again at the same time next Wednesday when our guest will be Miss Esther Williams. Until next Wednesday, then, this is Jay Stewart reminding you that for the smile of beauty, remember Ipana toothpaste. And for softer, lovelier hands, remember Truche, the beforehand lotion. Each Wednesday, Bristol Myers bring you Duffy's Tavern and Mr. District Attorney, which follows immediately over most of these stations. <laughs>